welcome to the Career Coffee Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Urban, Certified Career Strategist and Executive Coach, removing career roadblocks so you can achieve more impact, influence, and income. Welcome to Career Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Aaron Urban, and I am super excited this morning to talk to you about three top job search tactics that you need to keep in mind as a job seeker to get real results and make a successful career move. It's very, very important because a lot of people like to skip steps. And the problem with skipping steps is it will hurt you in the long term. So let's look at some of those and what that might look like for you as a job seeker. So number one, what is the most important thing that you need to do first before you do any job search, applying for jobs online, sending your resume out to your network. What is that very first thing that you need to do? And I'd love to hear from you what you think that very first thing might be. What is that first thing that you have to do before you do anything else? And a lot of times this this step is skipped, which means you're not really seeing good results in your job search. So I'll give you an example. If you skip this step, It's likely that on your LinkedIn, for example, you're being reached out to by recruiters for jobs that you don't even want. Or if you're applying online, let's just say through the standard, you know, Indeed or LinkedIn job board or what have you, and you're not getting any results at all. So no calls, crickets, nothing. It's likely you skip this step. So, hey, Phil, nice to see you. Hey, Victor, love to see you tuning in from Uganda. Wow. What time is it there? (laughs) <laughs> it must be pretty late. Um, so what's that top thing? That's the first thing you think that needs to happen before you do anything else in your job search. I'd love to hear from you what that might be, what you think that might be. And I'll share with you that thing that's oftentimes skipped. If you're not seeing results you'd like to see when you're applying for applications or you're not being reached out to for the jobs you really want, that number one thing, you don't have a target for your job search. So you're not clearly expressing what you're looking for. And it's a myth that we need to spread our our net wide and be kind of a generalist. And I have heard from certain companies, they are looking for people that have a broad depth of skills. So these people can obviously fill multiple hats because companies are running rather lean, but that does not mean that you are necessarily a generalist, okay? The problem with you being a generalist or, or not having a clear trajectory with your job search is that you won't get the results you want. And that is because of several factors. One of those is very simply technical at the applicant tracking system stage. So applicant tracking systems are, you guessed it, a keyword match program. And if you don't have the right keywords, you're not going to be seen. Oops, you get archived if you don't meet the job match criteria. So the number one thing you want to do as a job seeker to get real results is make sure you know what types of jobs you want to seek. (laughs) And ideally, these jobs will have, if you're looking for more than one type, they will share common transferable skills. Now, this is very important because as you, the job seeker, you want to discuss your career contributions what value you can bring to the organizations that are lucky enough to hire you. So in order to be able to do that with relevance to the jobs you're seeking, you need to have a target, okay? So what that might look like for you is, for example, I actually have a client who, um, when we first started talking, he's like, well, I could do sales or I could do project management. Okay, well, they're very different. (laughs) You need to choose. And unfortunately, you have to choose because when they're that diverse, it's it's tough to be able to sell yourself, particularly with LinkedIn, because you only get one profile to be able to see the results you want in your job search. He chose project management. Wise choice. Not saying that sales isn't a great, great choice, too, but he has a lot of transferable skills in the project management department. And then that was his most recent role. So it's a, a more I'd say easier for cr- or recruiters to see that transition. So for him, it was a very smart move to focus on project management. Um, so other types of roles that might be related for him, though, if he had that skill set, might be program management, for example. So, again, you don't have to only apply for one type of job, but we do need to have a target to aim for. So you definitely want to be specific in your job search so you can have those relevant keywords, industry, lingo, et cetera. 
because one of the most popular LinkedIn searches by recruiters, as we found in one of our uh, previous career talk, bleh, easy for me to say, in one of our previous career coffee chat shows from Melanie Woods, is one of the most popular searches for recruiters is by keyword or position title. And you need those. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, I'm looking for a job, but I don't, I don't have a position title before. Well, let's think about it. Have you done that type of work? For example, one of my clients, she is um, a data scientist, okay? Now, she's done oil and gas work for years and years and years and years and years. And she's embarking upon her second career, if you will, her uh, career after her career. She took official retirement from a major oil and gas firm. And now she's looking to transition into data scientist type roles. Very easy. Even though she was technically titled, you know, uh, in the more geographical or ge geophysicist, sorry, geophysicist type roles, she still did a lot of data analytics. So what you can do is you can take that title and you can also put a dash and say data scientist, data analytics, because it speaks to what she actually did. So you're not lying. You're speaking the truth. And most importantly, you're coming up in the right searches. So that's very important. So again, first thing you need to do before you create your resume, before you finalize that LinkedIn profile, before you start applying is you need to have a target to aim for. And if you don't have that target, you won't come up in the searches like you would prefer to come up in because you won't have the right industry lingo, the right keywords. So you might think to yourself, okay, great, Aaron, I have a target and I'm still not seeing results. So any ideas? Well, I do have a few ideas, in fact. So what you want to do is go out there and do a little research, do a little discovery um, of those types of roles that you're looking for. Pull down two to four tops because more than that, it just gets too much different types of job descriptions from job boards for the roles you're seeking. Take a look and see what common lingo they have. What do they share keyword wise? Make sure you put that in your resume and in your LinkedIn profile. You also want to make sure that your career contributions are relevant to the roles you seek. OK, we can talk about anything like, uh, well, I had a waitress job when I was in college. Strangely enough, it is not on my resume <laughs> because it's not relevant. All right. So keep it relevant. Be sure that and then that's not, not, not to say that your career contributions in other areas aren't important. But it is to say we definitely want to highlight the career contributions you have that are relevant to the roles you seek. So what? Other things, those top three tactics. So that's tactic number one. If you're not seeing results, you're seeing crickets after you apply for a job search, job application, or you're just not being reached out for the right types of jobs on LinkedIn by recruiters, you may not have a, a clearly expressed target in your job search marketing tools. And that's your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Okay. So what that's number one. So what is number two? Well, number two, how can you elevate your views on LinkedIn to recruiters and HR professionals. Well, there's a couple of key ways you can do that. And LinkedIn, of course, through the pandemic has made some wonderful changes to some features that job seekers can leverage. And one of those is the hashtag open to work. Now, I will admit when I first saw that, I, I called it the green, green ring of death <laughs> because historically, there has been a bias against people who are in transition. Fortunately, unfortunately, we had to go through this major pandemic and seeing millions of people laid off to for that to pass. So what I am seeing is that this bias that historically has been there is fading. Thank goodness it's about time because people are clearly seeing that it doesn't matter how skilled you are how good you are at your work, life is happening. And, and it's not, and 2020 has not been kind to a lot of great people that are wonderful. And organizations would be so lucky to have you, okay? So we got to keep in mind that fortunately this bias is passing. Thank goodness. So the hashtag open to work, you definitely want to leverage that, okay? It is actually a feature that recruiters can leverage in LinkedIn Recruiter, which is a behind the scenes interface with LinkedIn that they can search out potential candidates and they will leverage that. So make sure you have that hashtag open to work on your profile if you are actively seeking. Okay, so that is number one. 
right? That's number one tip. Number two tip, you want to make sure that you, if you are in transition, actively in between jobs, okay, in your about section on your LinkedIn, clearly express why people want to hire you. <laughs> this is very important uh, because otherwise a lot of people either, I don't know, they just talk about random things, but what you want to talk about is the value proposition from the people who may be hiring you. So why, what have you done awesome? Maybe your top three career contributions that are relevant to the jobs you seek. Hint, hint, that might be a good one to put in your about section. You also want to talk about, it's your professional introduction. So you want to talk about you know, what type of value you have to bring to the table, how you, what skills you have, um, what you're known for, if you're known for, what's your brand. So there's a ways and ways you can talk about you in your about section without sounding bragging. And it's just stating facts about what you've done in your professional life. That's relevant to the jobs you seek. So that's very important. Other top tip for you for LinkedIn and elevating your views to recruiters and HR professionals is make sure that you leverage your headline. Okay. Most people put, you know, I don't know, seeking new opportunities. Well, if you've leveraged the hashtag open to work feature in LinkedIn, you really don't need to do that. That's just redundant. So that's unnecessary. What you can do is you can leverage your headline like a billboard. So what I would challenge you to do today, in fact, if you haven't leveraged your headline to talk about why potential hiring managers should hire you and what skills you have to bring to the table, I challenge you to come up with a, a billboard advertising statement for you. What is your core expertise? What are you known for? What are you going to bring to the table? If you are or have been a project manager and you're seeking program manager type roles, then Talk about it. Um, program manager, innovative solutions. What is it that you bring to the table? And think of it in terms of marketing, because that headline is your marketing statement. And you have up to 220 characters. That doesn't mean you should use all of them because it can be a bit much after you get through three lines of text. So make sure that you are clear, succinct, and to the point. So that, that's how you can help. Also, to help you in general, make sure your skills and endorsements are on point and are relevant to the jobs you seek. So remember, and when we first started talking about that ideal, that target job that you're seeking, make sure you take those job descriptions and make sure those keywords and skills are in your skills and endorsements section. You can totally customize that. That is up to you. You're not locked into whatever someone endorsed you for okay i had a lot of crazy endorsements from when linkedin was encouraging everybody to endorse people for everything uh, like excel i don't even know how to do a pivot table okay so <laughs> me having excel and my skills and endorsements is a, a little much so let me know what questions you have what job search questions are you do you have right now? What are you struggling with? Because I want to make sure this is interactive and I'm answering your questions that are important to you. So please do pop them in the comments. All right. So to move on, what is number three? So what is that number three top job search tactic that you need to keep in mind? Well, it is how you can leverage your network, even though we are isolated right now. So we're not really doing many quote unquote, formal networking events. We're still doing social distancing. There are some things people are doing via the internet, but quite frankly, I'm not impressed. Um, <laughs> it's very difficult to network over Zoom, for example, unless you know how to leverage that and put people in small breakout rooms to no more than three people. It's very difficult to build connections. It just takes a lot of repetition. You have to show up a lot. So how can you leverage your network? Well, number one, if you have an existing network, and even if you have not kept your network warm like good coffee, many of us haven't. We've become victim to being busy and we forget our network until we need to find a job. Whoopsie. So what do you do? Well, now is always now is a good time to reach out to people that you haven't heard from or spoken with in quite some time. And you have a quote unquote great excuse. How are you? How is your family doing during this challenging time? I hope you're well. You can start that conversation on a personal note versus, hey, I'm looking for new jobs. Can you get me a job? Uh, that, that's not the best 
foot to put forward. So start on the personal note. You have a great, this is a great time to reach out to people you haven't reached out to for a while, in, in a while. Now, you might want to do that through in-mail. You can do that through an email, a text message, a phone call, if you feel comfortable. Hey, I'd love to talk to you via Zoom, if that's okay with you. Can we set up a virtual coffee chat, right? I definitely recommend you to reach out to those people you can and what do you say? Well, after you've talked about the personal items, because obviously you don't want this to be a job search begging session, virtual networking is really tough. So how do you do this? My top tip for you, if you need to reach out to people, you're not quite sure what to say, you want to start with something personal first, obviously. You can, like I mentioned before, set up a virtual coffee chat. If you want to talk to people face to face, you can just have a phone call. If you want to send an email or in mail, what do you say, right? Well, after the personal thing as a side, you might say, hey, I just want to let you know I'm looking for new opportunities. Be specific about what type of opportunities you're looking for. Do not go into this laundry list. People won't remember it. So if you're looking for, in our earlier example, program management jobs, say I'm looking for program management jobs in these types of industries, full stop. You might want to mention a few things that you bring to the table, but don't go crazy with it because one, they're not going to remember. And two, it sounds a little salesy. So you want to keep it succinct and to the point. And just know this, okay, networking is very important, but networking also takes time to bear fruit. All right. So I'm, I'm going to get real with you right now. The reason we hear that 80 percent of jobs are found through networking isn't because that's not true. OK, that is because nothing else is working. OK, and that is because people don't know how to leverage their resume. People don't know how to leverage LinkedIn. So people have to rely on their network. And right now that's really stinking tough because we're all isolated. What? I mean, it takes a while for your network to bear fruit. It's not a overnight kind of thing. It's not a one and done, okay? So let's just say you send that email to your network friends and it just will take some time. And just know that this is how networking is. Networking is rarely is it an immediate return on investment, okay? So just be patient with that if you're leveraging that. now. My clients that see the most results leverage the top three, their resume, okay, ATS friendly, making sure they have the right keywords from the job description and relevant career contribution statements, hint, hint, and their LinkedIn profile, making sure, again, they have the right keywords in industry lingo and the relevant career contributions, staying away from dollars and cents because LinkedIn is a public forum, all right, and their network, they leverage all three knowing that their network takes a little bit of time to bear fruit. And oftentimes it's not our first person connection network buddy that gets us results. Oftentimes it's that person who talks to somebody else. Then, then they say, Oh yeah, you know, so-and-so is looking for such and such. Oh really? And then they put you in touch. That's the way it works, but it does take some time. Okay. So let's see. Doreen says, um, I'm struggling with how much professional experience to include on LinkedIn profile. Good point. I've been told not to go back more than year 2000 on LinkedIn. You're right. You should not do that. Uh, let's see. Can you see me? <laughs> For resumes, I suggested I have a two page resume, one going back 20 years, the other one, a complete resume. What are your thoughts? OK, I have a lot of thoughts about that. So, yes, you're correct. You should not go pack back past the year 2000 on your professional experience. The reason is because, one, well, relevancy and two, age bias may be a concern. When they start seeing um, a lot of experience, that also comes with the price tag, right? So keep that in mind. Two page resumes. If all of your experience can fit into two pages, and you can also tailor that resume for each job application, which you should be doing. Great. My resumes that I create for my clients go up to three pages for experienced professionals. And the reason is this. You have two choices when you're doing your job search. And which one you choose is entirely up to you, okay? 
If you want to do two pages, that's great. Just know that you will have to have a master resume with everything on it. And then for every single application, you'll have to take bits out of that resume and put it into the, the custom resume for that application. In other words, you have to create a resume for every application. If you have time for that, wonderful. I coach my clients on how to do that how to create that master resume, what that looks like, and, and save themselves as much time as they can. But for most clients, we opt for the three-page resume. I really never heard anybody complain about that. And recruiters say they don't read resumes. They're not going to read a two-page resume either, FYI. The first half of your first page is the most important thing to a recruiter. If they don't see your, your relevancy at that, at that point, they're not going to read the rest of it anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's two or three pages. All right. The important thing here is to get through applicant tracking systems. So in order to do that, when you limit yourself to a two page resume, if you're an experienced professional, that could be time consuming. You have to create it from not exactly scratch, but you have to create a special resume for every application. Now, if you use a three page resume that is targeted to the jobs you're seeking, you can only need to tweak you know, less than 15% of that resume to make sure that it's highly relevant, okay? So you won't have to change the whole resume every time and it saves you more time. So it's entirely up to you. You have two different ways you can do it. If you wanna use a two page resume, you can, just know it takes more time to do it right. Here's the thing. One of the biggest mistakes I see job seekers, particularly if they've been out of work and they've been looking for a while, and a lot of people have because it's a pandemic and jobs are not thick upon the ground yet. Don't worry. The job search uh, market will start to see more uh, action about mid-September, mid-late September. So if you're seeing crickets right now, don't panic. But a lot of people have been looking for a while. The longer you've been looking, the more likely it is to you'll use what I call the shotgun approach to job seeking. And if you do that, you are not doing anybody any good. You're wasting your time. It's not getting through the systems. You do need to tweak your resume slightly for every application and also save that resume for that application for when they call you. So you'll have that uh, resume. So you definitely want to apply for jobs that you want and that you have time to make the adjustments you need to make to that resume to make it as highly relevant for that application as possible. So it takes a little time. The shotgun approach does not work ever. Trust me. But what about references? Well, references are not as important as they used to be. If you're applying overseas in, say, the European Union or the UK, you will be asked probably for resume, for references rather. So you definitely want to have those. So that their uh, process is a little bit different than the U.S. The U.S., I'm seeing more applications not even having an opportunity to put a cover letter on there, much less a reference. So references aren't as requested as they used to be. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. I have one more bonus tip for you before we wrap up. And how to keep an optimized job search mindset during tough times. So this is probably a career coffee chat all in its own, but I want to give you a top tip. And actually I started the Happiness Habit Project. It's a group on LinkedIn. You can find it. All you have to do is search for Happiness Habit Project. And it's my group. Feel free to join in. I'd love to have you join. And what it is, is an accountability group. So Research has shown that you can actually elevate your level of positivity. And this is very important for a successful job search because your mindset drives your actions. And that's totally unconscious. OK, so if you have a negative mindset, let's just say you're constantly saying to yourself, I'm never going to find a job. I'm never going to find a job. Guess what? It's rare we outperform our own expectations. All right. So it's very important that you watch what you say to you because you are listening. So what we want to do is we want to create the narrative we want, not the narrative we don't. And that's one reason I started the Happiness Habit Project, because it's so easy and simple every day to 
focus your brain on more positive things. Now, that's not to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and ignore that there's negative things going on in the world. That's not what I mean. Okay. But what I do mean is to look for the positives in even challenging situations. All right. Give my situation right now. Um, we are locked in to our PMB here in Colorado and, and near the West Cliff, Colorado, and what they call the Wet Valley, because we have a winter storm. <laughs> so even though I'd much, I'd love, I love you guys and I, I love seeing you, I would like to be hiking. I can't do that. So you have two choices. Life doesn't really care about your plans. You can either get better or better. Which one do you want? Well, the happiness habit is very, very simple. All you have to do every day for 30 days, and you want to maintain it past 30 days, okay? 30 days, it's like a diet, all right? People go on diets, they lose weight, and then after 30 days, they stop doing the thing and they gain the weight back. Don't do that, okay? So it's, thir but within 30 days, you will notice a difference. If you, every day, number one, think of three unique things that you're grateful for. And that could be very simple, like this fireplace behind me. Right. I'm very grateful for that fireplace. It's nice and warm on my back. Right. So three unique things you're grateful for every day. And number two, what you do every day is you either take or review a previous picture that you've taken before. Doesn't matter. You know, as long as it brings back happy memories. Right. So when I look back to my photos from my from my wedding, it always makes me glow with happiness. So look at or take a photo that makes you happy. Right. One photo every day and every day send a note, a positive note to someone. It doesn't matter. It could be a work colleague just thanking them for helping you. It could be a text to a family member. Hey, I'm thinking of you. I love you very much. You know, it could be anything. Just one note every day, one happy picture, review or take a new one every day. And then three unique things you're grateful for every day. And that will help you. And you can learn more about that in Happiness Habit Project and share in our group and hold yourself and myself accountable for being elevating our mindset to more positive level. So it's been a deep pleasure until next time. And next week, be sure you tune in. I'm going to have a special guest. Kurt will be tuning in from the Freedom Media Network. He'll be talking about how your brand to build your brand to elevate your career. So I'm super excited about that. Until next week, ta-ta for now. Thank you for tuning in on the Career Coffee Chat podcast. It's been a pleasure. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is coacheurban at gmail.com or tweet at coacheurban, Instagram coach.eurban or reach out to my Facebook group, Elevate Your Career. So I'd love to learn more about you, hear your insights and what questions you have. You can find out more about me at coacheurban.com. And don't forget please do reach out on LinkedIn. You can find me at Aaron Urban. Until next time, cheers. Here's to caffeinating your career.